So inside this box is what I believe to be the most secure phone of 2022 so far. Let's get it open and take a look. So before I explain what makes this phone so great, I want to talk about the elephant in the room, which is why would I dream of calling a phone by Google secure? I've touched on this point in the past, but let me explain my thinking a bit more in detail. So let me preface this with I'm all for smaller companies entering the market, building their own hardware, software, and releasing a device. I think it's needed and helps show the market what is possible. My issue is with the fact that they can only put so much money behind their product. If something goes wrong, they have a major security bug, a breach, or something along those lines, the company goes under or out of business, and that's it. On the other hand, when you have a trillion dollar company like Google, they can literally not afford to have something like that happen. They need to be on point at all times with their security. They have individuals trying to hack them along with countries trying to breach their defenses constantly. This in turn makes them invest billions into their security and keeping their corporation safe. The same type of necessity for security bleeds down into everything they produce, in this case, the Pixel phones. This device needs to be secure, not just because they want it to be, but because it has to be as their reputation depends on it. They cannot end up on that site like haveabimpone.com because of a breach. It's no secret that a trillion dollar company can make some amazing hardware. Just take a look at Apple laptops. Yes, they violate our privacy whenever it's convenient for them, but they create some truly stunning hardware. The issue is that Apple locks down all their devices, so you're pretty much stuck using their software. Yes, you can root an iPhone, but it's all a bit hacked together at that point. Thankfully, I honestly don't know why, but if you have an unlocked Pixel, all except Verizon Pixels are unlocked, you can install a different operating system on it in a non-hackish manner. This means you can get a privacy friendly OS such as Graphene OS or Calyx OS with the hardware of a trillion dollar company. The Pixels are one of the few, if not the only devices to have a solid baseline security posture and allow you to install an alternate OS on them securely and for all intents and purposes, remove Google from the equation. As I mentioned earlier, you could root an iPhone and make non-standard changes to the underlying OS, but Apple is always living in your phone. So with that out of the way, I have five main topics I want to discuss with the Pixel 6. So to begin, this is the first of the Pixels to offer three years of OS updates and five years of security updates. Apple has been doing this, so it's nice to see Google finally catching up. That means you can purchase this phone now and you are covered security-wise until October of 2026. If you're currently in the market to buy an Android-based device that'll continue to be supported, this should be your choice. Compared to some of their other phones, such as the Pixel 5a, which was released in August of 2021, the 5a will only receive OS and security updates until August of 2024. The next features I'm about to discuss could each be their own video, but I'll do my best to provide a detailed overview. If you find any of the features particularly interesting, let me know and I can do a deep dive into them in the future. If any of the information doesn't match up with what you've heard, let me know down below in the comments and I'll add corrections to the pinned comment. So the first thing I want to talk about is Google Tensor. It's Google's version of a system on a chip or SOC for short. Typically with a computer such as the laptop you might be watching this video on right now, you'll have a motherboard with some RAM, a CPU, and a GPU. With a system on a chip, all or nearly all the components required for functionality are integrated onto the single chip, which is how it gets its name of system on a chip because that's literally what it is. So the whole concept of system on a chip is nothing new. The reason this is such a big change is that in all previous Pixel versions, Google has used Qualcomm chips like most other Android manufacturers. Google has for years built their own hardware in-house for their servers, which includes the ones used by GCP. This lets them control every aspect of the device from both the hardware and a software perspective. With a trillion dollar company that has the money to put behind something like this, this gives them the ability to optimize, customize, and secure everything they use from the physical hardware all the way to the software. So the fact that Google was able to build and design this internally and implement it in the Pixel 6 is a way to up their level of security. They're not dependent on a third party to manufacture the chips for them. They control every aspect of that and are able to build it to the standards they require. Also wanna mention that if you didn't know, I actually drew this. I did not buy the whiteboard this way. I will link down below to a high quality drawing that Google provided. So if you want to check that out, that'll be down below in the description. The next concept on this diagram I want to talk about is trust zones. So to break it down into some understandable terms, your phone has two zones. We have a secure, which is the trusted zone, and we have a normal, otherwise known as a non-secured zone. These zones are hardware separated to keep the data as isolated and protected as possible. 
So in the secure zone, no one can directly access the data and no one can change the code or behavior of it. This is why the secure zone is also referred to as a trusted execution environment or TEE for short. An example of some data that would be stored in the trusted execution environment would be biometric data, also known as your fingerprint, pin codes, or device encryption keys used to verify the integrity of the operating system. In a TEE, the applications that reside here must be trusted as well. On the Pixel, these apps are part of the secure open source OS Google has running there called Trusty. An example of a trusted app that would be in the secure environment would be biometric authentication. Let's say you have a password manager app you created and you want to enable biometric authentication in it. You would make an API call with your app to the TEE requesting if the fingerprint used is valid on the device. The decision is fully made within the TEE, and at no point in the process are biometric credentials shared with the app or allowed to leave the secured space on the device. Your app that made the request would just receive a pass or fail, and that's how the validation occurs. This ensures that this sensitive data could never be obtained by, say, a malicious app on your phone, whose only purpose could be to harvest and exfiltrate your fingerprints. So while this trusted and non-trusted environment isn't new, it has been built by Google at the hardware level on the new Google Tensor chip. So next is the Tensor Security Core. I dug for a while and couldn't really find much concrete info. At this time, I don't think Google has released much on it. But from what I did find, it's a physical set of hardware that consists of a dedicated CPU, ROM, one-time programmable memory, a crypto engine, internal SRAM, and protected DRAM. It runs the same OS as the Trusted Zone, which is the open source Trusty, and its primary responsibilities are protecting user data keys at runtime, hardening the secure boot process, and interfacing with the Titan M2 chip whenever your phone requests a verification of credentials. So essentially in the past, anything that I needed to communicate with the Titan chip would communicate with it directly. In the Pixel 6, if anything wants to communicate with the Titan M2, it needs to go through the Tensor Security Core. It's basically like adding a bouncer at the door. Lastly, that brings us to the Titan M2. The first function of the Titan chip is that it helps with the secure boot process. Since it has its own completely separate processor and memory, it can start monitoring the boot process as soon as the controller gets started. The first thing it does is run a self-check of its own firmware, and once that has been completed, it monitors the normal boot process of the phone bit by bit. This ensures that no additional code is loaded at boot that could be used by a third party to compromise the integrity of your device. The M2 also supports Android Strongbox, which securely generates and stores keys used to secure passwords and pins. One of the other interesting items the M2 has is a true random number generator. When it comes to cryptography, random numbers are at the core as that's what's used to generate keys and encrypt your data. The Titan M2 works with a Tensor Security Core I mentioned previously to protect user data keys while they're in use by the SOC. This Physical separation of tasks makes the device much more difficult to compromise as different tasks are handled at different physical locations. As the saying goes, don't put all your eggs in one basket, and with this setup, your eggs are all over the place. I just want to clarify that everything I just explained is related to the security of your device, not privacy. If you're interested in privacy, you're going to need to install a custom OS instead of the default Google OS that comes with the phone.